very much. I think uh, further applause for David because I think David sounds great. Thank you. What a wonderful occasion. Doesn't it feel a tremendous honour to be here tonight at this uh, fantastic tribute and honour uh, for Sir Patrick Moore, which we shall be unveiling very, very shortly. Really, our godfather of astronomy. He inspired us all. And it's interesting when you think back to 1957, when television was in its infancy. So was the space race. And it needed one man, one great character to pull those two universes together and communicate it to everybody. And of course, it could only be Patrick Moore who could have done that in that truly unforgettable style. I always think really, if uh, astronomy itself, if the night sky itself had a personality, it would have the personality of Patrick Moore. Yes, indeed. And of course, as we were saying, everything here, this is such a wonderful, wonderful place uh, for this uh, tribute to Patrick uh, to exist in this place where people are so inspired about astronomy and about space exploration uh, to this great level that we are reaching at the moment. And with that in mind, as everything is so beautifully displayed here, we give to you now, just ahead of our unveiling, to lead us to it, a brief history of the Sky at Night. In 1957, the Sky at Night began. They asked me to present the show. Well, I'll do the best I can. They said, wouldn't you, are my lucky star from Singing in the Rain, make a very splendid theme tune? No. <laughs> Don't suggest such fluff again. We need some stark Scandinavian introspection performed in a minor key. At the castle game by Sibelius, that's the perfect theme tune for me. So, as the sky at night got underway, the space race started too. We achieved the show's objectives, delivering all events to you. We saw the far side of the moon. Could our consciousness absorb it? And Sputnik launched on October 4th into elliptical low Earth orbit. <laughs> the astronauts and cosmonauts in competition, rivalry, fury. But the cosmonauts win space first. Well done, Gagarin, Yuri. <laughs> the Americans must now answer this. What possibly can they do? Apollo, our greatest achievement from every point of view to stand upon another world, enthralling every nation. Earthrise, so profound to see, over magnificent desolation. Armstrong, Aldrin, Cernan, they dominated all the news, and what thoroughly splendid fellows. They gave me very fine interviews. <laughs> so, we cross the 1970s frontier now, and the Viking probe is probial. Is the life on neighboring Mars quite possibly, perhaps microbial? <laughs> And Voyager powers to Jupiter, and Saturn's rings divine, and the resplendent blue of Neptune, summer 1989. We saw the pillars of creation, awesome, iconic, astronomical. Once Hubble, rather like myself, was fitted with a monocle. <laughs> and Huygens powers to Saturnian moon, surpassing all parameters, as professional astronomers viewed Titan through the telescopes of the amateurs. Eerie overcast eclipses, shuttle missions, and space stations lead us quite majestically to our 50th year celebrations. And at our 700th program, well, we're quite the institution. The Astronomer Royal tells our bride May he resembles Isaac Newton. <laughs> <laughs> On our 55th anniversary now, yet another birthday flag unfurled. With thanks, with pride, with gratitude. We are the longest running show in the world. Well, my time, it draws a little closer now to pass through an invisible veil, a journey beyond all the galaxies, my time to embark and set sail. Well, from here I can see all the universe, its magnificent mechanics on view. I see the answers to every one of its mysteries. Yes, I can. But I'm not telling you. <laughs> <laughs>